Okay, this is for my higher pupils. This is, uh, if you like, it's a lecture based on an essay question which I set regarding the crucible. The essay question was, choose a scene from a play in which an important truth is revealed, briefly explain what that truth is, and assess the significance of its revelation to your understanding of a character or theme. In this case, we're going to go with character, and that character will be John Proctor. Arthur Miller's 1952 drama The Crucible is based on the backdrop of the 1692 Salem witch trials and he uses this in order to explore a number of different themes including honour, hysteria, superstition, religion, power. However, central to the protagonist, John Proctor, is the notion of the name, that is to say the effect of a person's reputation within their community. When John is compelled to throw away his good name to save his wife, Elizabeth, we see the full complexity of his character revealed. Now, despite, despite being acknowledged as a good man in Salem, the audience is aware from very early in the play that John and Abigail Williams, the former maid of the Proctors, had a brief affair which had ended seven months previously. Proctor's wife, Elizabeth, uh, adopted an emotionally cold attitude towards her husband after this. Although she outwardly speaks of having forgiven him, he doesn't feel this forgiveness and he actually remarks to her that your justice would freeze beer. He suggests that she may have been fair with him, but there's no warmth, no love in her forgiveness. John clearly loves his wife, but he feels he cannot prove his fidelity to her because she hasn't forgiven him. He protests that I have not moved from here to there without, I think, to please you. And, I, and still an everlasting funeral marches around your heart. And the connotations of this image are that either Elizabeth's heart is dead or that uh, her heart is mourning for the loss of a love that has died. Abigail despite the end of the affair, still hopes that she and Proctor will have a fulfilled relationship eventually. The relationship with Proctor made her feel liberated, made her feel free. And because of the sexual nature of the relationship, she feels that it allowed her to see beyond the hypocrisy and the lies of Salem and of the Puritan, Puritan society in which she lives. She's outraged when she is rejected by, by Proctor, and she shouts at him, and now you bid me tear the light out of my eyes. I will not, I cannot. You loved me, John Proctor, and whatever sin it is, you love me yet. She feels this light that they shared is, well, this, this rejection of Salem, this knowledge, is something that bonds them together, and it cannot be broken. Now, despite some initially flirtatious behaviour in Act 1, where uh, jo John remarks to her, ah, you're wicked yet, aren't you? John makes it clear that he has no profound depth of feeling for Abigail anymore. And he exaggerates when he puts this message across to her. He says, Abigail, I may think softly of you from time to time, but I will cut off my hand before I reach for you again. The effect is clear. The relationship is done for John but evidently it is not done for Abigail. The rejection is significant in that it shows Abigail's real motive in stoking the hysteria around witchcraft in the Puritan community is really to exercise her own desire to remove Elizabeth Proctor in order to allow her the chance to steal her husband. The drive of vengeance by Abigail is understood by Proctor. She confesses to him that the hysteria is based on a lie. Again, in Act 1, when they're on their own, she tells him that we were dancing in the woods last night, that's all. But if Proctor is to reveal the truth, he is put in a difficult situation because he is asked to put his own word up against Abigail's, and of course Abigail's word is the word that is believed by the court. And the court's been set up to investigate the reports of witchcraft in Salem. By Questioning this, he puts himself in danger of being accused of witchcraft as well. As Danforth explains, you must understand, sir, that a person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There'd be no road in between. In addition, when he reveals that Abigail's confession came about in a moment of uh, isolation that they shared together, John has to confess to his wife that he has lied to her 
and that he and Abigail have actually shared time together on their own since the affair. Elizabeth replies, you were alone with her. Then it is not as you told me, and doubt is again cast on John's faithfulness to his wife, and he is tortured by this guilt, wanting to do the right thing, 